Today we're going to talk about the five things that we hate about this 2024 WRX. Hello everybody, my name's Gray. My name's Logan. And this is Living Like Gray, where we like to make videos with cars. And today we're making a video about this 2024 WRX. I recently bought this WRX and it has been an absolute dream to get to drive. But today what we want to do is we want to go and talk about the five things that we absolutely hate about this car. There's a lot to love, but there's a few kind of nitpicky things that can really get under your skin. And if you don't actually own one, you wouldn't actually know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each of the five things telling you guys what we would change about this WRX. Let's get into it. Now for the first thing that we hate about this car, we're gonna start at the front with the engine. Now it's not necessarily the engine that's the problem. This car has a 2.4 liter flat four cylinder engine, which pushes about 271 horsepower with a turbo. Now, pretty much every aspect about this motor is better than the previous generation, such as the horsepower, the displacement, even the turbo and everything about it is just genuinely better. So why don't I like it? And really it comes down to the red line. This has a 6,000 RPM red line, which in first and second gear, you have to shift pretty quickly as pretty much as soon as the turbo starts engaging. And so right as you're getting up into that fun zone, you have to shift. Even a couple hundred RPM bump would make a huge difference in this car, whether it's 6,800, 6,900, or 7,000 RPM red line, which Subaru has done in other models, like the BRZ, for Christ's sake, has a 7,500 RPM redline. So why couldn't Subaru do it with their best WRX? Now, I'm sure that there's plenty of reasons like gas saving and whatever else that Subaru had in mind. Who knows, maybe in the aftermarket, someone will bump that up to 7,200, maybe even 7,500 RPM, whether it's just a tune or you actually have to do some engine work to get that higher redline. But that's the first thing that we hate about the new WRX. So the second thing that drives me absolutely crazy with this car is the trunk. So do you ever get that feeling whenever you go and you walk away from your car and you're like, oh, I think I left my car unlocked. Well, this car has a fun little feature that whenever you put any pressure in your pocket, sometimes the trunk can open, which it doesn't matter if the car's locked, it doesn't matter if it's unlocked, it'll open no matter what. So there's always a worry that whenever you're going and walking around or you take a sit that the trunk's gonna be open. It's gonna be wide open and all the stuff in the back is going to be out for the public. If you don't catch it, there's a little light up in here which could drain your battery. So this is a problem that kind of plagues Subarus. But the thing is, is with like the BRZ, the trunk doesn't open all the way. This one, opens all the way, exposing everything inside and running your car out of battery. Now, the third thing that we're gonna talk about is something that is very unique to this generation of WRX. In the past, you haven't been able to get EyeSight with a manual WRX or pretty much any other manual Subaru vehicle. If you don't know what EyeSight is, EyeSight is Subaru's safety features. It was super high rated back in the day. It was kind of the first technology of its time that it was blind spot monitoring. It was auto braking. It was a bunch of safety features that Subaru had developed to keep their drivers safe. Now, originally, if you wanted to get this, you couldn't in a manual. At least Subaru didn't allow that a couple years ago. Now, in the new WRX, EyeSight comes standard, whether it's in a manual or an automatic. Now, that is overall pretty much a good thing, except for one feature it has, and that is the Lane Keep Assist feature. Basically, what that is, is if it detects you going over into another lane without your blinker on, it'll force you back in to your lane. Now, that might not sound like that big a deal, like just use your blinker, but Sometimes it gets it wrong. Sometimes you're not gonna need to use your blinker in certain scenarios and it's going to fight you. So basically that lane keep assist feature, overall it does keep you safe, but as someone who doesn't like their car driving for them, I would rather be in control of the vehicle and not have the vehicle force the wheel while I'm driving down the road in one direction or another. Now, luckily you can disable this feature. However, that leads us to problem number four, which is a huge pain. So problem number four is this big, nice screen. It's, it's pretty divisive, some people don't like it. Say you wanna go and disable lane assist, you need to go to the home, the settings. I, <laughs> I don't even, car, eyesight, lane departure, 
Oh wait, I don't even, this is the problem. I need to go through like 20 menus to really get to anything and having to figure this out is a complete pain. Also, not to mention that Subaru hasn't really caught up with the quality of touch screens like all of the other car companies. So it's a little laggy as well. One of the biggest issues that I've had while using this is while you're driving and you go into your, you're trying to change stuff on the screen, this car has got a pretty tough suspension. So your hands bouncing around, you hit about every single thing apart from the thing that you want to hit. So that's problem number four. So we have to move the car just down the road a little bit to adjust for camera setup. Now we don't have our seatbelts on. As you can see, the car is telling us that we do not have our seatbelts on. Now, normally that's not that big of a deal, right? Like just put your seatbelt on. But if you're just moving your car down the road, the car really wants you to put your seatbelt on. So this is the loudest seatbelt chime that I have ever heard in my life. And it is also the most persistent seatbelt chime I've ever heard in my entire life. But overall, like that is the loudest seatbelt chime and the most annoying seatbelt chime I've ever heard in my life. Now, I did hear that there's a way to disable it. Now, we've never actually tried it before. Apparently, you buckle and unbuckle the seatbelt about 30 times and it will shut itself off. Um, but again, we haven't tried that and the car was off and it was still beeping at us to put our seatbelts on. There is probably another way to disable it and it's probably to pull the fuse, but it seems like a nitpicky thing, but it, it's pretty bad. It's ridiculous. Like it is, it is insanely loud for no reason. Like just having a normal seatbelt chime that pings you every once in a while. It's like, Hey, you forgot to put your seatbelt on would be plenty fine. But Subaru decided to go above and beyond on the one thing that no one wanted them to go above and beyond on. Those are the five things that we hate about the brand new WRX. So make sure that you go and subscribe if you wanna see more content with this WRX in the future. And be sure to leave a comment down below about what you like and what you hate about the 2024 Subaru WRX and whether we should make a video about what we like about the 2024 Subaru WRX. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time, bye. So if you stayed this long, I have a sixth thing for you. And it's something that I hate, not about this car, but about Subaru. Why is there no STI? Tell me. I don't want a GT, I don't want a TR, I don't want a TS, I want a true new gen STI. Please, Subaru, I'm talking to you. car really wants you to put your seatbelt on. This is... <laughs> I just installed it. It's still yelling at me.